Hello and welcome back to the Chromecast at the Rising Moon. My name is Elaine and on this channel I do the Spirit Guide Monthly live every last Friday of the month. I hope you're able to join me. I also do pick a cards and today's pick a card is what area of your life is about to get better? What's about to improve for you? There are four piles in this pick a card. There's going to be a moment here where you can spend some time with cards, see which one really calls out to you. I do ask that you don't pick these piles by I always pick one, two, three, or four. It does not marry well with my particular reading style. So take a moment, close your eyes, take a deep breath, open them, and the one that kind of calls out to you, that is the reading that you're most meant to receive. I will see you at the time of your reading. Welcome back. If you chose file number one, and this is your reading, we're putting the number one over there so people can easily fast forward to their reading, but there are timestamps in the description box down below. Hey, before I get started, don't forget to subscribe. It helps my channel. If you like the reading, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to book me for a private reading, there's a link to my website in the description box down below. Also, if I refer to any of uh, like particular Oracle decks, there's likely to be a link to my Amazon store or to the actual decks that I'm using down below as well. Let's get started. What area of your life is about to improve? What's about to get better? It's time for some good news. All right, I have fly with faith. Trust your sturdy wings and know that the universe is working its magic on your behalf. Ooh, that sounds like a manifesting energy. And this is an absolutely beautiful card. This is a beautiful deck. It's the Hummingbird Oracle. It's if you've been tested around your belief, around your trust, around like investing in the idea that there's a divine power on your side, this particular card is telling you you're going to have reason to have faith in. I have Archangel Zedkel, which is self-acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness. Sometimes one of the things that we have to work on is self-forgiveness. Like it can keep us in an angry space. It can keep us in a doubting place. If things haven't been working out as you think they're meant to, a lot of the times you start kind of picking on yourself about the path that you've taken. But you have a divine power on your side. It is trying to help guide you. Self-acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness. When you have love of self, it's so easy to have love of all. I have woods. Be like the woods, calm, soothing, mysterious, and full of life. It's like things are settling down for you after a time of disruption. There's going to be this feeling of renewed faith in your life as well, which is wonderful. I have miracles. That's another card of things manifesting through the divine. Expect the wondrous to emerge. A pile number one, things are looking good for you. All right, we have fire, strong emotion, passionate love or hate. Well, we're doing an entirely positive reading, so let's go with passionate love. Let's see, and remember, that can be passionate love of, you know, a new interests, new things to study, new things to do. It can also be new partners. Let's see what the reading reveals. Um, I will use Oracle decks based on what the reading is guiding us towards, since there is no central theme of what area is going to improve in your life. I have pineapple, reconciliation, interesting. And then I have solar portal, being centered, balancing power, and manipulation. Remember, manipulation is a term for being able to kind of shape the energies around you. You have multiple feelings of power, miracles coming in, and lots of manifestation energy. It's like an interest in life is going to be reinvigorated as well, and we're going to find out what that reconciliation energy is about. We're taking eight cards, potentially nine, we'll see. Um, eight being the cards for infinity and perpetual motion. Here we go. Let's get going. One and two. What do we got for pile? Number one, the tarot. Cirque the tarot is bringing us a predictive spread. One, two, three. Let's see what we've got. I did shuffle kind of extensively off camera because I will be using the same deck for each pile again. I have the world in reverse, new cycles beginning. I also have six of pentacles in the upright. Ooh, I like that. That's a state of balance. It can be receiving a gift. Um, it's kindness and generosity. It can be a grant as well. I have it with the nine of cups in reverse. Now, sometimes that's delayed wish fulfillment. If, honest to goodness, sometimes we get tests around our belief that there is something guiding us, our belief in the divine. 
This card can sometimes mean disappointment, but it sometimes can mean something coming in after a long period. It's super easy to continue to have faith in a path and being guided when everything's going your way. But the test, and we do get tested, and why? Because it strengthens us. It makes us really determine what we believe and what we are trying to do with our own life. Because we can't, we are meant to be self-directed. We get guidance, but we're meant to be self-directed. If your faith has been sorely tested, it isn't because the divine gave up on you. It was when we give up on the idea that there is a purposeful path, that there is something guiding us, we don't think of it this way. But we are also giving up on the idea that we are important enough to have that. We are giving up on self. And we have this compassion, self-acceptance, and forgiveness energy. It's like you're on the cusp of finding out everything was worth it. I have the Knight of Cups in reverse. That's a card for self-love. Now, sometimes it's romantic disappointment, but I kind of don't have that. For me, it is a card in reverse of love of self. I have it with the Three of Swords in the upright. All right, now this can be heartbreak, despair. It can be the COVID card. It can also be um, surgery. It can be all kinds of medical things. The world and some of the states around COVID apparently really slowed things down for you. With the Nine of Wands in the upright, you also had to learn how to have good boundaries before you received because you're likely to give things away too easily. I have the Moon in the upright. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get a ton of specific information. Um, quite simply because people who can manifest, like we get a little too fixated on outcomes. So they might keep it a little vague. With the Eight of Swords in reverse, which is freedom, it is a path forward. I actually genuinely like the energy here. It's like a new cycle is beginning. There is an easing of, like it's going to be easier to invest in life again. The reconciliation energy, I don't have a figure to attach that to. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Tidra Lang's, Empress Lang's um, uh, Oracle deck. It is one of my favorites. I always sound a little bit funny when I'm reading the cards because it's in a vernacular that I, like, I always sound like I just escaped from academia. Um, this is one of the best Oracle decks I've ever seen. There is a link to purchase it in the description box down below. I don't receive anything if you buy it. I just am thrilled with it, and it was created by a client of mine. And I can't say enough good things about it. Let's get going with this deck. What's coming up for pile number one? I'm trying to find the area that that reconciliation is. Because it might be reconciliation with like guides and with the idea of the divine, the idea that you are being guided. Because we all go through this kind of long dark night of the soul where our faith is tested, where we feel disconnected, where we have to find our own voice, our own power, and a reason to keep going that isn't centered on, well, because the divine wants me to. Because that turns us into, there's a difference, like surrendering to the divine with trust is understanding that even when our path is difficult, there's a reason for it. It is understanding that I have trust in this process. Faith and trust go hand in hand, and faith, tr trust, and love are very interrelated as well. Speak up more, one and two and three. It's like you're... There's a, like, your authentic voice is coming out. Like, if you struggled with figuring out who you were and what you were meant to be doing, things are coming into alignment that allow for this delayed wish fulfillment. Things had to be delayed in your healing journey until such time as you knew how to protect yourself because you hadn't learned it. Like, motives of, like, you don't possess darker motives with this moon card. So you had trouble seeing them, and you're just being freed from like a toxic cycle. We have black magic. Now, this particular card means that all black magic against you is broken and that you are safe. That can be about generational curses as well. Gossip. Ooh, divine anger. And then I have no, you know better. Interesting. Divine anger, like this with black magic and gossip, it's like you might feel like your enemies are laid a little bit low, like I will observe with mine eyes and see the punishment of the wicked type of thing. By the way, that is one way to protect yourself against the evil eye is with Psalm 91. Um, you can also say Psalm 23. I personally prefer Psalm 91. Putting in the appropriate pronouns, I actually use I instead of you, and I do say it every day. Um, let's keep going here. There's so much reward energy around this because the six of pentacles is also that balanced state 
The Nine of Pentacles, it's, a long, it's been a really long journey, but it's towards self-acceptance. Wow. True feelings are masked. The sun, the spirit, unseen forces watch over you. This is the Endora deck. It's the Endora Fortune deck. I really am getting the sense that it, you're just going to feel like something's on your side again. We have true feelings are masked. The sun is your perseverance is rewarded. Like the word patience was replaced with perseverance for the word I could not get away from in 2022, which is that it's going to be a hard slog. You might not even understand what, what you're doing, but there's a point. Unseen forces watch over you, the spirit. I swear the reconciliation that feels like it's on the table here is actually with the divine. Like you've, you've been through that time period where it felt as if you weren't guided and you will feel like your efforts are being rewarded again. There's a, like, I like this, there's an earthly security energy here as well. You've learned to be guarded with people until you see their motives, which you struggled with that. Like you struggled with seeing people as they are rather than you are. And it has nothing to do with narcissism. It's just like you've got this very, like you've had faith in people in a way that got very, very challenged. What have I got for pile number one? What area of your life is about to get better? Gratitude. Income and blessings just all over the place. And they are personal and they are material. They're personal and they're material. This Three of Swords with the Nine of Wands and the Moon, this is protecting yourself against heartbreak. Like this, there might be something with a relationship coming in here, quite simply because like you, you, you wanted to give too much sometimes. That Six of Pentacles card is a generous card. Okay, what do I have here? Endless possibilities. The possibilities of my life are endless, and this thought invigorates me. Though we ceaselessly plan ahead, anything and everything good could happen tomorrow. I can choose any path I want to be able to achieve my dreams. It's like that feeling of walking uphill is going away. Like it's, it's, it's finally going to feel like more is coming to you without it being the biggest battle. I'm going to talk about this a little bit. I am thankful for this life and the opportunities that it presents. The energy of this Nine of Cups in reverse and the world in reverse is all about like feeling the burden sometimes rather than the joy. And it looks to me like something important with... This is interesting. You don't let things slide in the way that you used to. You used to accept ill treatment sometimes. And I don't mean that as a criticism. It's actually about what kind of person you are versus what kind of person other people can be. Sit there. Grateful for incoming blessings. There's a spirit of forgiveness with the divine as well. The Three of Swords is just... Boy, that's a card of like trauma and pain sometimes. It feels almost as if the journey has been long enough that there has been a struggle around believing that your anything is walking it with you. And that really was very purposeful about this self-love energy. Without meaning to, you really might have accepted the wrong situations into your life and like tried to make do like you're you had to learn what you deserved in order to receive more and you're much better about standing up for yourself with this nine of wands energy i love that eight of swords energy in reverse though i love the eight of swords in reverse it is a path being opened it is freedom it is being able to believe in self because in the upright it's a card of self-doubt you've had a lot of challenges around that this moon card is also just, for me, the moon in the upright is one of the cards of magical forces at work in life as well. We have multiple cards of miracles. We have multiple cards of, like, this reconciliation energy. I don't have any partners returning, but what I have is, like, remember, being reconciled to something is accepting something. And 
I think it's really accepting the idea that you are watched over and cared about and that the challenges you faced in particularly like the last maybe 18 months or so, because this is, has a, whenever I get that perseverance card, it's never like, wow, it's been a rough six weeks. It's more like, man, the last three years have kicked my butt around the block twice and then deposited me in yet another butt kicking. We have power. Try to remember that as things start happening now, because there's this energy of flow beginning. There's a strange energy of just flow once again. And potential is the thing that stayed behind, which whenever anything stays behind, it never catches my attention until I turn back to put the deck away. So it's the back of the deck energy, which means the back of the deck energy is trying to get in on something. So power and potential. In order to receive what you have been asking for and what you've been trying to manifest, you had to like really be able to invest in self a lot more. The area of your life that is about to improve, the thing that's about to get better, has to do with receiving more, with having more, with reconnecting, with feeling that guidance, that reconciliation energy, strong emotions, passionate love or hate. There's this energy of like pushing back against the divine a lot. And you're not saying you slowed down anything, but rather that you... Here's the thing. With this energy of somebody who will give and give and give, it means that everything that you receive until you learn how to be self-protective is in jeopardy. Because when somebody like loves you or you are loyal to somebody, there's a sacrifice of self energy that can come in with that. And this need to learn how to be resilient and believe that like your efforts counted for something, even if you weren't constantly being encouraged, is what like this journey through, I almost want to say journey through a desert has been about. Let me see what else I want to get here for this particular reading. Let's go with messages from fairies. Here we go. And they're not fairies or spirits of error, but I'm a broken record about that. What area of life is about to improve? What, what's about to get better for, for pile number one? It's like everything. It's what you want is about to get better. Your desires, the things that you're trying to manifest. And it, it's no longer a person. And that doesn't mean that it excludes a person. It's just that in, if in the past you thought, if I could just meet somebody, I'll be happy. That's no longer what you believe. If it's that you used to think, if only I could have enough money, then that's no longer, like you have a fuller picture of what happiness really means. Happiness is being comfortable with self, comfortable with path, and believing that we are connected to something that only lets us fall as far as we insist on falling sometimes. Because our life really is like kind of a culmination of our own choices and speaking solely about myself, wow, have I made my journey harder. We have be yourself. The situation calls for you to be your authentic self, which is the basis of your personal power. That's really the vibe here, is that what's getting better is that you, you know yourself now. You know yourself, you have trust in self. You had to probably have trust in the divine really, 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 really challenged to get here. This is the one that is, trust your sturdy wings and know that the universe is working its magic on your behalf. That's what the struggle has been about, is learning how to trust in your own power, learning how to trust in your own abilities learning that your perseverance is not about like anything having it in for you or blocking a path it was teaching you that this is the wounded warrior card this is somebody who has been through a lot this nine of wands energy but it's also the card of having very strong boundaries of being able to be self-protective of keeping like the wrong people out and letting the right people in it can be a feeling of like being besieged and true feelings are masked, unseen forces watch over you. If you have like been, and this divine anger card is the one, like you might have felt kind of cursed. People can't get to you any longer. And you were 
you had like an open heart space. You had an open heart space. And people try to exploit something in that. Everything that you've been through has been about healing your ability to just trust in you before you trust in almost anything else. And that's not about being mistrustful of others. As hard as it might be to believe, this reconciliation energy and then this energy of multiple energies of miracles and faith and gratitude, if it, if it sounds ridiculous right now, apparently soon it won't be. Because this hour, like this is not a long-term reading. I did not intend it when I was shuffling cards. I was like, what area is about to change? Meaning imminently. Why? Because you know what? 2022 has been one of those years for people where just finding the will <laughs> sometimes can be a bit of a challenge. The area of your life that is about to get better is seeing rewards from your efforts again feeling as if the divine is has your back again, being able, the self-acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness. It's like you would extend forgiveness not knowing what your true worth was. And you had to have this journey that was very challenging to teach you your own worth, to teach you how to protect yourself. You might have encountered people who kind of, like they did, they hurt you and tried to cross boundaries. But you're, I like this energy so much. I see the Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Cups in reverse as being just a really positive card. Simply because for me it's a card of self-love. All, all readers have a different relationship to their card. You will develop it the more you read. You're grounded. You're strong. There have been times with this Three of Swords energy. This, by the way, is one of the more positive Three of Swords. It really is. Like these acrobats are one of the things that are calling out to me on this particular card is, man, you feel like you've had to jump through hoops. You've had to jump through hoops, but it was about learning stronger boundaries, being able to look for the underlying motives of people when you meet them. Because you're, like I've got this you're true blue type of energy. And you had to learn how to appropriately extend trust to others, your faith in the divine as a guiding and benevolent force in your life, and your appreciation of your own journey is the thing that's about to change as more and more comes to you in return to all of the efforts, all of the, it's like the breakthrough is at hand here. The breakthrough is at hand and the light comes back into your life. Expect the wondrous to emerge. Pile number one, what's about to get better for you, apparently is an influx of meaning, faith, and belief in your life once again as a miraculous and wondrous journey. And does that kind of leave things a little bit vague? Yes, but when you have real trust in your path and in your journey, sometimes you believe in the worth of taking things as they come. Pile number one, that was your reading. Take care. Be well. Welcome back. If you chose file number two, then this is your reading. Um, we've got some pre-selected oracle cards. Cirque de Tarot I, is going to be bringing you a predictive spread. I shuffled a lot off camera because I'm using the same deck for each uh, pile. And um, if there are, are timestamps in the description box down below, but I put the number over there so people can easily fast forward. Hey, please don't forget to subscribe. It helps my channel. If you like the reading, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. You want to book me for a private reading. There is a link to my website in the description box down below. What is about to get better? What's about to improve? We have releasing, purification, spiritual cleansing, letting go. If toxic patterns in your life are going to, it's like it's everything has dissipated. Like you have found your energetic flow. And a lot of people in my collective are a form of divine conduit. And I was telling a client yesterday that one of the things about cleaning up all your chakras, getting into alignment, and I do suggest people do balancing meditations, is because when your chakras are balanced, you have energetic flow that comes down through you. You have the most power available to you from the divine and within yourself. I have flowers, happiness. Oh, you're going to be happier. Yay! 
I have star. Ah, oh, guaranteed success. Group number two. Yay. Let's keep going here. Well, this is delightful. I have fresh air and flowers. Spend time and natural and the natural beauty of the outdoors. Hey, listen, this is such an important thing for people trying to get in flow to do. Make sure that you visit nature in the ways that you can. Now, listen, if you're like, hey, I'm watching this from a wheelchair, I can't really go outside then watching things that have natural beauty, listening to um, like natural sounds for meditation, there is always a way to bring to you what you need if you can't go to it. This is the energy of things being in abundance, things blooming. This is just a bountiful and a fruitful energy. And apparently like a love and a zest of life are coming back into alignment for you. I have beneath the surface, hidden truths, something unknown. There's a surprise in store for you that is going to make you much happier. Oh, oh, holy crap. Okay, I need to tell you something. Holy crap. Um, I won't take one of these cards if it flips and I see it when I'm shuffling for the piles. This freaking card came out for pile number two, and I was like, ah, oh, crap, it's Wish. I wish I could take it. I put it back in. I shuffled again. Apparently, it came back. Your wishes are about to be fulfilled. There's like a, 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 a wish that's dear to your heart that will make you so much happier that is about to come true. And then I have distant thunder, clear the air. Hey, listen, in preparation of this, make sure you are doing your work to get energetic flow going through you. Balance your chakras, meditate as often as you can, do spiritual cleansing as often as you can. Um, for somebody like me, like I really like, I currently like don't even, I don't drink, I don't do anything right now because I have been purifying my energy, trying to make sure that I, I am in the flow as much as I humanly can be. It doesn't mean you can't ever have a glass of wine or you can't ever take an edible. What it means is getting into a really clear state of mind can connect you with your divine flow so much. And the distant thunder clear the air, that's that, that's that like the storm is going to break and then it washes everything away energy let's get going here my god i'm excited for you guys let's go for pile number two what area is about to improve what's about to get better and about is like imminently guaranteed success and happiness it's like the it's like your efforts are finally going to break through like resistance is falling away. Let's see what we've got. I have the Seven of Cups in the upright. Now that is actually one of my cards for spell work, for manifestation. It is everything being up in the air, but it's also fantasy. It can be illusion, but it's also a menu of choice. And for me, in this context, it's a very positive card because it is like dreams being brought to you. I have it with the Five of Cups in the upright. It's been a season of difficulty and challenge and loss. It's like nothing would materialize for so long. With the lovers in the upright, this could be a relationship. That is the card for Gemini's as well. It's also the card for choices. It's also the card for union. I have it with the high priestess in reverse. That is secrets being revealed. Hidden truths, something unknown. Apparently something's coming to light that will make you very happy. I have temperance in reverse. Right. This is, I, I, every spread I use, every position has multiple meanings. This can be underlying issues. And one of the things that was holding things up is you needed to learn, what am I going to say? I'm going to say patience. Patience and balance. Why is patience so key? When we, we, when we hear divine timing and we go, oh God, divine timing, it takes forever. Really it doesn't. If you react to the concept of patience with frustration, it means you still have work to do on it. Everything really does happen as it's meant to and as it is supposed to and when it is supposed to. And the sooner that we lean into, because we can, we can increase flow and we can shorten divine timing by releasing the struggle against it. This is a card of struggling against that flow. It is also one of the cards that is about healing. I have the Five of Swords in the upright, Five Five, that's energy of change. Inner conflict, okay, with the King of Pentacles in reverse. Oh, good. It's like depression is being replaced by merriment. 
because the lovers is also a soulmate card. It is also like this feeling of connection with self and others. And it comes out with the two of wands and the upright, which is a card of the world is your oyster, having everything available to you. These are two cards of like every good choice being available. It's a traveler's card as well. This particular one is so fiery. And we have wish, one of my cards for manifestation, happiness guaranteed success. I love the energy here. It's about everything being cleared out of your path at long last. And the way to like hasten this, the way to lean into it, the way to make things happen more easily is to accept that everything is happening as it is meant to. If you can even look at the, you know, because these are cards of struggle, conflict, grief, needing to process. Fives are the energy of change. In order to gain full access to your power, because that's what patience really is, when you, particularly when you're trying to manifest, is understanding that it's going to happen as I ask it to, because we all have like multiple realities available to us. Our realities are based on our choices. We can go towards our growth, towards our expansion, towards our flow, and towards our abundance. And we go towards it more easily when we accept that if I give myself over to the idea that I have a higher self, that this higher self, even when it denies me like jobs or relationships, or I want that house, that there's a good reason for it. That there's something to learn from a set of circumstances that might be challenging. We learn our power and our strength through our challenges. And that's why when people say like everything has a lesson in it, you do have to process the anger, the pain, the grief sometimes because disappointment is hard. It is genuinely, be, and it's hard to accept sometimes that it's like, why would a loving presence not give me what I, my whole heart's desire is? Because again, I always use myself as an example because that way nobody else gets in trouble. I did not have the best choice in partners and in men, and I caused more difficulties in my life than I needed to. And I often would not listen to sometimes the people around me. I literally had a shaman come to me when I was 35 years old and tell me, you need to go train as a shaman, but you're going to need to leave your husband. I was like, well, I'm not going to leave my husband. Well, spoiler alert, he was right. I would because he told me I would, and I just kind of shut down to it. And sure enough, it took me 15 years to accept the message. And that's the way I made my life more difficult. Examine your own choices and understand that sometimes what we need to learn in patience is that if we kind of tune in more, if we allow ourselves to be in flow, we get more information. And sometimes, sometimes we're going to be being told, no, not that, something else. Trust that there's a reason. Sometimes that happens. That's releasing our attachment to outcomes. Now, there is essentially a belief that all suffering comes from being attached to things. I do not believe we are here to transcend this experience. I really don't. I think we're meant to work in conjunction with our desires, with our wishes, with our power to make this 3D form the best it can possibly be and to make a difference in this world. That has, like, that doesn't, that I, you have to be attached to things sometimes but not rigidly attached. For me, passion comes from the idea of making a difference and making a difference has being attached to the idea that we are here to be active in this world. We have to learn to be in our true manifesting energy with wish and two of wands, all of this. And if you look at this, to me, the reason this, this is about um, casting about manifesting is that there are many things up in the air trying to be materialized. Things wouldn't materialize for you and wouldn't materialize for you and I think you probably like want to excise the word surrender from the universe because you're tired of it. Like you're like but I tried and then nothing happened. When you surrender it is not about things happen instantaneously. It is about you are preparing your energetic space, clearing your energy, preparing for flow. Hidden truth, something unknown. Guaranteed success and happiness. 
if something took longer than you wanted it to, that was not because you were being denied. It is because as difficult a concept as it can be, divine timing gives us things when they're meant for us, when we will do the least to impede our own happiness. And surrender is not being told we don't matter. Surrender is being told if you will work in co-creation with the universe, everything that matters to you will be everything that comes to you. Meaning you will learn to trust that what I am being brought to, is being brought to me is being brought to me in the degree that I need it to be able to release and go and be in flow. What's changing for you, what's improving is that it's almost like you exhausted yourself. Like you achieved surrender via like, I just, okay, nothing, this, I'm just fighting against everything. I've cried, I've begged, I've screamed, I've demanded, I've been depressed. And it didn't change anything. And so now I have reached the state of peace that was partially achieved through exhaustion. But it is a state of peace, no less. Like when you finally fought so hard that you had to rest, that was when peace began to come to you. And patience is peace. Patience is power. Patience is the key to being in flow. I have message. Wow. And then I have strength. Understanding. This is very on the nose. This is a card of overcoming with compassion. This is a card of personal power. Understanding, and then this is just so being connected to the divine. Sometimes we make our own obstacles because the concept of the death of ego is seeing ourselves as we truly are. And sometimes we really are, without meaning to, the architects of our own difficulty. Um, like, again, I, I embody that. Oh my goodness, do I embody that. Everybody who is powerful does. Because when you know you have tremendous power, you have being willful and, being, and having willpower is the same thing as having power. When we get really super attached to, if I just lean in, I know I can make this happen. And ignoring signs of, wait, maybe that's not for you. What's, what's happening, what's changing, what's improving is that the world is your oyster now. Even though like the fight was hard, with those, this five of cups and the five of swords in reverse, it did not, you're a born fighter. You're a born fighter. And so you couldn't for a long time find a way to surrender because to you that was like giving up a fight. And it's not. It is knowing that your fight is, it's not a fight at all. It is a reshaping of the world around you in a way that you are directed and guided to. The only fight has been against authentic self. The idea of being in co-creation with the universe. And it's because your past's been hard. Your past's been hard. Hidden truths, something unknown. Guaranteed success and happiness with wish. What's, what's improving for you? It's kind of like, well, apparently everything. But the journey has been one where depletion, depletion was like one of the things that the only way you could get to patience was, I, I've got to rest, I'm so tired. <laughs> like fatigue was the only way that because you are a warrior, you're a warrior. That's what the strength card is about as well. I have a brilliant idea. Birds. Messages are coming to star quality. Good Lord. Um, I absolutely love this deck. It is the Apparently So deck. There is a link to purchase it in the description box down below. It was created by one of my clients. I don't receive anything if you buy it. I use it every single day and it has, it gives me so much valuable information. And I plug it so hard because I've never seen anything like it. I just think it's marvelous. 
but the star quality, quality and guaranteed success. And then birds are chirping near and far, signs of better days right now and right here. There's more than one way to, unfortunately, skinny cat. Um, the, the universe had to get a little creative with helping you. And it's not because you're impossible. That is not what this message is. It's because you don't know how to do anything other than resilience to you was being driving yourself to the breaking point. Just driving yourself to the breaking point in order to get things done. Your ability to practice self-love was incredibly challenged. It was just incredibly challenged because you don't think of it this way, but that fight, 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 fight energy that I have here and here is not being respectful of what you deserve. And if you're saying, I had to fight, I had to fight so hard just to get here, I swear that's perception. The story I was sharing about, like, do you know how much easier my journey would have been if I would have been receptive to the idea? And like, everybody else could see what my husband was. Everybody else knew. That's something that I've really had to come to accept, is that other people had a very clear view of him and I would not listen. I just would not listen. I see the good in people. And so I saw what good he was presenting as being true, but it was a manipulation. It wasn't there. And it took me 15 years longer to accept it than I could have if I simply would have listened to the messages being brought to me. Um, and again, I always use myself as an example because it has a tendency to resonate with people because we all do it. It's not a criticism that's about your strength and your character and your might and your power and how you accidentally used it to try and fight the demand. We have the stars. A long journey brings rewards. Yeah, it does. <laughs> the unicorn, good fortune and friendship. The shield, you are safe from harm. Despite the perception that it has been... This is, this is not a criticism, and please remember, I keep telling stories about me because people can understand better that it's not a criticism of you. We make things harder sometimes when we won't accept that release attachment to outcomes is nowhere near the same thing as saying what you want doesn't matter. It's saying that because you were not treated properly sometimes, you don't know that you deserve more. And case in point would be the bad marriage that I was in for a very long time that like I, I just received appalling treatment sometimes and it was still the best treatment I had ever, ever had. So I thought it was the best that could be had. And I just wouldn't listen to all the people around me who are like, that guy's not good enough for you. We have gratitude. All humans suffer and I find the idea revolutionary and freeing. Because the people who I envy, admire, and idolize suffer just as I do. So I choose overwhelming gratitude for my life for all that I am and I need. Listen, it can be downright offensive and painful to hear when somebody says sooner or later, when you are looking back at your journey, if you can see the love of self that can be born from the ways in which you have overcome. That's what the being grateful for your own suffering can be about. Not about like, hey, thanks for hurting the hell out of me. Um, it is about like when I'm talking about how I made my own journey harder, that is, that is the path of powerful people because we know we have power. Trying to work in conjunction with something that loves us, sometimes we make our lessons harder. And that is not about blame. You're to blame for your own suffering rather than as soon as you could look for the lesson was when you began to learn it. It has nothing to do with saying your suffering doesn't matter. You're, you deserve to not be in pain. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to be peaceful. You deserve to be passionately in love with the idea of being alive. And guess what? All that's coming to you. All that's coming to you. And it's been a long journey. This has not been, this has not been, this has not been a short one. This has been the type of journey where trying to fight, 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 fight. 
you fought not because you are uh, impossible or obstinate. You fought because it was the only way you knew to survive. And try to hear this with the intent that it is meant with. It was not your fighting that made you survive. It was that you have never been alone in this. You have never been alone in this. And if you can like point to this struggle, that struggle, I very much made a difference. You always make a difference. You always make a difference. But if you had been relaxed into the idea of something's on my side rather than working against me, and sometimes things are working against powerful people. Like we have to have patience with that as well. Like the divine has to overcome some really sinister stuff sometimes. That hidden truth being part of it. Assertiveness. Stand up for your beliefs and only say yes if you want to. Flower power. That's the second card of flower power. That's because your, your hummingbird card was also that I've now buried under 5,000 oracle cards because that's how I roll. Some, if, if The more powerful you are, the more chance there is that something tried to push back against you. The assertiveness is not about struggle. It's about belief in the rightness of your own journey. Spend time with flowers and flower essences to increase your personal healing power. Please listen when you get a repeated message like that. Listen, group number two, what's awesome here is that what's getting better is like happiness, success, the feeling of your efforts not having been futile, of like things easing up enough that you kind of see the worth of the journey, the thing you were asked to persevere through. But mostly it's about more earthly success, about having everything available to you, about having good choices available and good outcomes. And if you're still in the stage of surrender that is exhaustion, because powerful people sometimes really do have to exhaust themselves because we can make things happen. We can. Like that direction of will and just insisting that no, this is the thing for me, can actually throw up our own barriers. Remember, no one person, no one outcome, no one anything contains the seeds and the truth for your happiness. Your happiness, your love, your peace, your power are all within you. And they are not inspired by one person nor are they under the power of any other outcomes other than within me, I will choose to look for the ways in which I am being guided, even when it feels like there's just something telling me that it's time to quit, that there's no point in this, that nothing has my back. Remember, and, and by the way, like when, when we start talking about this, people will be like, well, what about this? What about that? What about like a five-year-old ending up in a wheelchair? I promise you, as hard as it is to encompass, is that as soon as this life is over, we don't just weigh out its value by the difficulty. We find the beauty in the existence and in the struggle and in the ways it inspires us to love and to experience love of self and others. And sometimes people see the most value in life when it is very, very, very challenged. Don't measure your journey by how much it has hurt. Measure it by how much it has taught you. Everything's getting better. Particularly, it looks like happiness, which has been elusive as you fought with what may be depression, over, like you did, to release, you had to work yourself to the bone, apparently, with these two fives that encompass grief and struggle. Your choices going forward will be different, I think because you will trust that even when there are setbacks, it's for a reason and it's to help with something and other tender things. All right, group number two, success and happiness and a feeling of being connected. And then also there's something with this flowers, which is things bursting forth, things coming into bloom, like every area of your life Allow the blessings to come to you rather than insisting I want a different blessing. It's the only proviso I have on this, okay? Group number two, that was your reading. Take care, be well. 
Welcome back. If you chose pile number three, then this is your reading. We're putting the number three over there so that people can easily fast forward to their reading, although the timestamps are in the description box down below. What's about to get better? What's going to improve? This is an entirely positive reading. No matter what cards come out, we put the positive spin on it because that's what the cards were selected with the intention of. We've got the Tarot de Cirque. Um, I'm sorry, Cirque de Tarot, uh, bringing you a predictive spread. I shoveled a lot off screen because it's being used for all the piles. We've got some pre-selected oracle cards. Before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe. It helps my channel. If you like the reading, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to book me for a private reading, there is a link to my website in the description box down below. Grounded. Keep your roots and stand taller than the trees. Listen, that's about earthly security. That's about 3D blessings coming in. A grounded energy is the earth energy. When we're talking about what's about to improve, it should be all of your material surroundings. I have view from above, get the big picture. One of the repeating messages in this, which will happen for collectives, is that your everything that is coming in, everything that is improving, will give you a different perspective on everything that has passed. If you can try and inhabit that energy now, that whatever it is I'm facing, whatever I've been struggling against, whether it is loneliness, whether it is lack, whatever it, whatever it might be, try to take a greater picture and try to see what is this teaching me about my own resilience, about my own power, about my own ability to overcome. I have dog, close-up, pleasure with a close friend. That's a card about loyalty and companionship. Four-leaf clover, great good fortune. I'm telling you, that's what the, the first thing that came out had to do with security. It's like you're going to be able to see your future again, like make plans again. And you've been in this state of flux and probably like the view from above is one of the hanged man energies. If you've been in a time of like, it feels like nothing is changing. It is because there were lessons to be learned about what to do in those time periods. Because this is one of the, this is an emotion group. This is the element of water normally. It has nothing to do with being a water sign. It's the element that is ruling the particular changes and things that will improve in your life. And that's why I tell people don't pick up by the same number over and over again. Um, this is about more flowing into your life and the things that were not flowing, trying to figure out what the lesson was will help things manifest more quickly for you. I have Ice Queen, introspection, self-analysis, and fortitude. Has the journey thus far been teaching you about your own ability to simply persevere, which apparently is the word for 2022. 2021 was the word patience all over the place. 2022 has been just repeated messages about perseverance and the worth of it because sometimes we really are engaged in a long struggle against this 3D world. And that's what that grounded energy is saying. I have, what are you? This is let it blossom. The timing of the universe is precise and wise. With patience, care, and trust, the flowers you've been tending to will bloom in glorious beauty. A time of fruition, a time of manifestation, a time of more earthly blessings being part of your life are with you. And we have kinship, community, and your group. With this dog in close-up, it's like more companionship is coming towards you. It's so weird. As I picked up this pile, I went and picked up the archetype deck, which was all the way across the room, because I'm like, this is more to do with people this time. The last two groups, well, I'll leave that. I'm not going to spoil any piles. But there's always a different theme with different piles for me. What is about to improve? What's about to get better? What's about to improve? What's about to get better? This is for pile number three. This is this is a beautiful deck as well. Okay, there we go. And it's dropping things. I have the Page of Swords, which is communication, messages. The Queen of Pentacles, that is that earthly earth mother having it all. It's the wifey card type of energy. It is earthly security. It is hearth at home. I love that energy for success and for manifestations around that. But it is this person who lives in, like, this is someone who is able to handle hearth and home and, like, business. This is one of the best rounded queens because she's very, very grounded. 
with the Knight of Cups in the upright, that is new offers coming in, new people as well. It's like romantic dreams as well if you've been helping for a partner. One of the things that might be coming to you is a partnership. And it comes out with the Four of Pentacles in the upright, which is a secure energy. Now, it can be the miser's card. It can be holding on to things too hard. It can be being too guarded. We're taking the positive. Every card has so many meanings. This is about standing on firm ground. This is about having the pillars of your security being bored. Nine of Cups in the upright, which is wish fulfillment. That is bounty. It is manifestation. We've got the sun in reverse. Remember, these can be this particular spread has multiple meanings, and all of the cards relate to each other in different ways. One of the meanings of this four row is going to be the underlying issues. Page of Cups in the upright. Temperance in the upright. Everything being healed is one of the cards that contains a hidden two of cups as well. Listen, for different people, this will mean different things. But this is more romance, more love, more connection with others is one of the areas that's going to improve for you. Always be open to what the universe is trying to bring you. For people, like because I do so much work with helping people heal from trauma and codependency, one of the hardest stages in recovery for people is that stage in which Oh my God, they just want a person, please. It's because it's so hard for codependent people to be single. And they just want their, like their person to help carry their load so, so, so much. And every other form of connection has a tendency to come to them during that period because balance is one of the things that is in healing, which is in temperance. Everything that's about to improve is very much your personal relationships. And this is, we've got the, the Knight of Cups and the Page of Cups this is the beginning of something new and pleasing and it's about if not falling in love about falling in love with life again since the temperance card which is the sagittarius card as well is one of the cards that's about having a hidden two of cups in it and about being balanced when you are healed that is when you are actually ready for union we try to rest the process because again we think another person can make us feel better than we can and part of the healing journey is understanding that it's sometimes really pleasant to have somebody else there. But at the end of every single day, the person that you are with is you. Even if you are in the arms of the person that you love the most outside of you, the person that you are truly with in your consciousness is you. Your divine self can be in conjunction with another soul, but in this 3D, your thoughts, the stream of consciousness that you have is yours. And that is why development of self, self-reliance and being able to function as an independent, strong unit is part of gaining our personal power. So that's the backstory. What's coming up is fulfillment of dreams and wishes, the end, a new growing cycle, things coming into blossom. The sun is such a positive card that even in reverse, it has a positive connect, connotation. You've also learned apparently how to tame anxiety which was one of your biggest battles. We all have battles, we all have struggles, and we all have things that we need to be tested on, have our... When I was talking to a client the other day and like talking about the fact that I really wish we would talk about how painful healing actually is. Because at first it starts out to be devastatingly painful. It's like everything that the universe touches, you're like, oh my God, help me. And as you heal, it does feel like something's going, does that hurt? Does that hurt? Does that hurt? And it gets less and less and less. And we can have such resentment around the idea of, oh my God, quit poking at me. You're not being poked at, you're being strengthened. That's what that's about, is learning to have more and more faith in self. And when you have more faith in self, you, ex you receive more love because it's a healthier form of love. Because you have love for self. Until we truly love ourselves with whatever are things that we're trying to improve, because we'll always be trying to improve. We will always be trying to improve in a lifelong journey. Trying to reach for the highest and the best that we can be is part of a spiritual journey. It doesn't mean that you're not good enough. It is simply that to get closer and closer to divine source is to continue to reach more and more for your higher self. Real love. Well, <laughs> nailed that from space. Opportunity. <laughs> Let's take one more on that. Don't give up. Um, there's also a stage in healing. Like, I only just giggled because it's not the my normal trauma response laugh. 
but because it's fun. One of the ways you can tell that you're really healed from toxic relationships is you come to a point of being like, yeah, you know what, I, I really rather would be alone than with the wrong person. I would really rather hang out with me and friends and interests and pets and whatever else it is that you have in your life than to hang out with something or somebody in any dynamic that damaged me so much that I ended up in years worth of pain. It is a difficult part of the journey, but it's such a necessary one. Everything that's improving is in your personal life. Like more happiness coming to you. The idea of romance returning to you. This ability to love self and to have patience with yourself and with your journey. And then the Nine of Cups is it's the wish fulfillment energy. But it's more than that. It's about bounty and fulfillment and just joy. It's the life is a party energy. And the outer world has been very challenging to that. And again, like not everyone's searching for romantic love, but if you are, what's what this card, what this particular group is saying is that it's time. It's really almost time. And you will know because there's a part of you that's like, oh, okay, okay. Um, huh. All right. Well, we'll see how that goes. You can tell when you're really ready when it's not your driving force any longer. If you really think all that's missing is my person, it means that there's still a little bit of fulfillment to be found in your existence. And why do we need that? So we don't let the wrong people in just to have somebody there. That's why. It's not a punishment. It is genuinely being uh, isolated and asked to be spending time by yourself. It's not, it's not in any way a curse. It is the gift of finding, if you don't have somebody by your side and you don't have somebody by your side and you don't have somebody by your side, you either have to give up on the idea that life is a worthwhile journey or you have to learn how to enjoy life as, he, as yourself. And that's the goal of self-love. And when we have self-love, then we don't allow others to mistreat us. Oh my word. Companion, I knew I was supposed to pick up this deck. Loyalty, tenacity, and unselfishness are the light attributes. The betrayal by misusing confidence, loss of personal identity, that's what you are healing. Because of the nature of this reading, that's what's healed, is nobody can misuse you any longer. And then I have Samaritan. Refine your capacity to help those you would prefer to ignore. Shadow attribute is exacting appreciation and recognition for the help you offer. The happiness that is coming to you, the love, the fulfillment, the companionship, whether it is with self or others, is also going to give you a greater appreciation for simply life. Great good fortune. There's just blessings raining down on this particular pile. And is it, is it kind of that like, not a moment too soon energy? Yeah, yeah, it is. But that's, try to remember that the contrast of life has value, that it does, that the happiness that is coming to you, if it has been a struggle to get here, that that view from above energy, that view from above energy, if happiness comes to you after a struggle, it is that much more acute. It is that much more like focused and it has that much more power. Now we can get into a fearful energy of like, oh, I'm afraid that this will just happen again. That's one of the ways that you can tell that you still have a little bit, because even when we're healed, we have to do maintenance work. It's like viewing yourself as a great big garden that needs to be cultivated and tended can help a great deal. I love the energy with these cards though. I was positive this card was going to be about it, but this group is going to be about a person. Real love, opportunity, and don't give up. And the only thing you're being advised to remember is that love is not threatening, even if it's not permanent. Like that can be a hard thing for people who like really just they're like, but I really just wish I could have a companion on this journey, is that even brief relationships, if you view them as opportunities to grow and experience and love, can be so worthwhile. You don't invest in so, in so much in there's one person for me because you believe that you're, you're ultimately your one person, that this is your journey, your experience, your path. And like for some people, they're like, yeah, no, I'm just not that person. I'd rather have friends than have a series of brief romantic relationships for a variety of reasons, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
but the real love and the opportunity is more and more is coming to you and you will always have the right to decide what you wish to do with it cracker positive energy surrounds you love joy and another marker for good fortune awaits boy group number three this is like just gorgeous I just I'm, I'm digging and loving on this energy let's see if we can keep it going with everybody else has been getting a, if they're not fairies or spirits of air, I am a broken record about it. Why do we identify in decks these little creatures as fairies? It's because it's what we think. The depictions of fairies are, are not entirely accurate. And spirits of air are basically attached to the spirit of air, the spirit of advanced communication or the Archangel Gabriel, also the guardian of the element of air. And they carry forward messages and blessings and guidance on our path. And that's what spirits of air are. And is it a form of angel? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just that angel has such a particular connotation through religion. And what it really is, is a messenger of the divine. And that's what a messenger of air, spirits of air are. All right, let's get going. What do we have? Oh my God. <laughs> Love life. Yo. Um, okay. The basis of your question involves your romantic life, which is now changing for the better. Um, love, joy, good fortune, companionship, love, life, real love. Knight of Cups is the romantic dreamer. The Page of Cups is the also the start of something new and pleasing and a surprise. <laughs> um, this is this is just so wonderful. Um, when will it be here? Apparently, no later than Sagittarius season. Which, if you just heard that and you're like, that is six freaking months. Don't look at it that way. Look at it as, wow, I really, when you've been by yourself for a while, there comes a time where you learn how to enjoy your life just as you. And it's about what you want, what you desire, what pleases you. And that is, there are sacrifices to be made around that when you have a partner. After a breakup, one of the things I tell people is you can tell that you've started to heal when you rediscover parts of yourself that you kind of weren't indulging as much because the other person like didn't, wasn't as into it. And you will find yourself reclaiming the parts of yourself that you put into a dormant stage for the sake of a relationship. Now in healthy relationships, we don't really do that. But in unhealthy relationships, we do. However, that said, like as a for instance, like I don't eat meat at all and have not in so, so, so long that it's going to be weird for me to be around anybody who does if I ever am again, like in any kind of committed sense. And that would be something that it's like, yeah, I really should enjoy having complete, like I eat whatever I want, whenever I want. Like I have this almost when you're a kid and you think that your adult life is going to be like, I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to eat whatever I want. Real adult life has limitations around it related to money and sometimes circumstances and sometimes to health. But realistically, self-indulgence is one of the gifts of being single and enjoy it. If it really doesn't come to you before the beginning of Sagittarius season, which let me look up my date range on that in November 22nd to December 21st, you're just not that long enjoy the idea that it's like i'm still on vacation with me i should have a party with me i have change a change of residence partner career or job is on the, the cards you're restless and in need of a change and that is exactly what's coming your way i'm going to take one more on this i rarely read those paragraphs because they so rarely have um validity it just kind of felt like they did this time so let's see what we've got else health an excellent time to start an exercise program or diet. Many new friendships are on the horizon. And then I just fucking knew it was going to be there. Love. Love is in the air. A great time for commitment and taking relationships to the next level. The rare, rare instance in which I am going to be reading those cards in full. You have love, love, love. Romantic dreamer card. The beginning of something love. We have companion. We have, we have a lot of clues that the time has finally come for people who are hoping for love, for companionship, for an extension of their personal life. And if it truly isn't, and this is a timeless reading, but like marking from this time period forward, we've got August, September, October, four months. 
four months at the absolute outset from this particular marker in time. And if like even one part of you is like, I can't take it anymore, that means you're not healed. That means that because enjoying your life as your life, not made whole or made worthwhile by the presence of another is part of a healing journey. It has nothing to do with having to remain alone. But realistically, in a healthy relationship, you have to be joyful in you. Because if you look to another to make all of your happiness, all of your joy, all of your experience, then they have power over your happiness that can create imbalance and dysfunction even in the healthiest of relationships. Pile number two, this could not be a clearer message. Apparently, what area of your life is about to improve? What area of your life is about to get better? Love in all its forms is coming to you. And if it is still just the tiniest bit in the offing with that temperance card, make sure that you're enjoying your life and knowing why you love you. Because knowing that why you are lovable to yourself, knowing the parts of yourself that you find funny or adorable or absolutely desirable is part of receiving the treatment that you deserve in relationships. Because it will keep you from withstanding anybody who does not treat you as the gift that you truly are. And that's why it's a very important part of this. One more time, let it blossom. Love is busting out all over. Go forth and love your life and know that you will be loving it with others in the not too distant future. Group number three, take care, be well. Welcome back. If you chose pile number four, then this is your reading. We're putting the number four over there so that people can easily fast forward to their reading. Um, before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe. It helps my channel. If you like the reading, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to book me for a private reading, there's a link to my website in the description box down below. This is the Cirque du Tarot bringing you a predictive spread. I've used the same deck on all piles. I did shuffle pretty extensively off camera as well to make sure that we were getting the accurate messages for all the piles. Today's reading is what's about to improve, what's about to get better. Fingers crossed. Let's go. Soulful appreciation, heartfelt gratitude. Whenever we get gratitude as a message, it is that your the reasons for your gratitude will increase meaning that blessings will be apparent, that you will feel, again, the worth of the journey has been one of the themes connecting all these piles. And for collective, there's always gonna be a thematic thing. Soulful appreciation is also a connection to your divine self, feeling connected to divine guidance, the gratitude for what guidance is available to you, and a true feeling of connection to your highest self. We have cleanse, wash your weary spirit clean and take a walk in the wooded glades. It's like a releasing of, like, I, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, you're releasing a former part of yourself because we're always ourselves. <laughs> like, like you're releasing the difficulties of a journey when you talk about cleansing. It means that the frustrations are being washed away in an appreciation of all that is being given to you. And this is an increase of that feeling of connection and the feeling of being blessed. Stepping into power, you are strong beyond measure. A feeling of power, a feeling of guidance, particularly if you felt a little cut off of late, like you'll you'll feel as if someone is, is lighting the way again. And you might have lost that feeling for a while. I have door, opportunities are waiting for you. Good, 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 good more of an, a 3D energy, more of like things coming into, like sliding underneath your feet to giving you that feeling that you're standing on powerful ground again. I have, well, family wishes come true. Interesting. Um, so what's family? It's not always family of the blood. It can be about your tribe members. It can be a feeling of being connected to others. It can be what you hope for the world can be what you hope for community. It can, of course, be if you've been hoping to have a child, it can be that. It can also be your treasured hopes for your family. Um, not everyone, particularly since I help so many trauma survivors, not everybody has the same relationship to the idea of family as others. But this is like having that feeling of a deep connection again, because that's what a well really is. I have destiny, divine purpose, passion, and service. 
I'm telling you that divine energy is all over this particular pile. That feeling of things being back in balance. If you look at this, this is a transformation and it does have to do with 3D security. That feeling of a well having run dry, it's like there will be replenished energy with that cleanse energy as well. We have moon dance, which is listen to the rhythm and sway along with the heartbeat of the universe. What's the area that's improving is like that feeling of like if you are meditating, you're going to feel that you receive. If you are asking your guides for guidance, you're going to feel like they're right there saying, take, a, take, take the next left. If you have been hoping to understand what your true, authentic, soulful purpose is and who you truly are, you will understand yourself in the eyes of the universe as well and step into your true power. But destiny and purpose is there. It is as if a feeling of this all being meaningful is available to you again. And it might have, and it has something to do with the greater world. It might really have been something you struggled with. What's going to, okay, what's coming in? What's getting better? What's about to improve? Group number four, and here we go. Beautiful duck. Here we go. I, of course, own far too many decks, but I do love them. The seven of swords in the upright is treading carefully. You know, it can be the lies, deceit, manipulation. It can be the need to, like, walk it on eggshells type of thing. It's also a temporary situation. It's also the lone wolf card. This particular one, I don't know. There's something far nicer about this Seven of Swords. Like, it's almost like a magic calls out to this person in the background. And you can't tell if he's taking those things or putting them away. Let's go. I have six of wands in the upright. That's a progress card. That's the triumph over adversity card. That's a social media card. This is one of the most fiery depictions I've ever seen. It's the Herald's card bringing good news as well. It can be a new person coming in. Um, it can be literally moving as well. What it is is the card of progress. I have the, okay, whoa, that's a family card. This is happiness, fulfillment, it is a life partner card. It is, the Ten of Cups is complete fulfillment. It's like, this is beautiful. Um, what else have we got here? The moon in reverse is clarity. I have the Nine of Cups in reverse. Oh, oh, you felt lied to by the universe. Um, this can be underlying issues as well. This is a strange spread. It's an eight card spread. And it has perpetual motion. So all of the cards re relate to one another. This is the 3D world. This is the shadow self sometimes. So you'll see me point to different cards in the spread as meaning different things because they, this card will relate to this card. It's complicated. Just roll with this part. We have the page of pentacles in the upright, which is about lessons learned. It's also spell work. The pages get things started. Is about learning new things. It is again, there's just 3D appreciation for all of this. At the Three of Cups in reverse, um, for that particular energy, it can be that feeling of isolation that kept you from feeling connected to others is dissipating. The Devil in the upright, the Devil's not a bad card. It doesn't have to be, it can be about earthly pleasure. Um, it can be, you know, codependency, it can be addiction, it can be a bunch of negative things. When the question asked about a reading, it has an uh, implication for how the cards are to be interpreted. I also have on the back of the, your back of the deck energy on this, which I don't often check, but I just kind of felt like doing right the second, the Six of Cups, which is kindness, generosity, past life relationship as well. There's a lot of clarity around the ways in which your journey has been hampered in ways that were about benefiting you. If you've been isolated in a way that like made you feel almost like you were, <laughs> the word alien actually just popped into my head, as if you were maybe, there's this feeling of dissociation that's coming through with this particular card. There's gonna be a feeling of inclusion again. There's a feeling of, there's so many different cards of like some disappointments of the past fading away, 
into a brighter future, being able to be connected very easily. This is balance between the earthly self and the higher self in this particular current incarnation as well, because remember this card will relate to this card in the light attribute and the shadow attribute. The six of wands, it's like, hmm, there's a pan your dues energy with this. Like something took a little while longer than you wanted it to because like it, it needed to be earned in a way that because the harder something is to achieve, it can be, it, it's that much more satisfying when we get there. And then also if we can manifest whatever we want in this flash, boom, bang, while well, I call it the flash and thunder magic, it's not really pinned into reality. This is a card of something taking root and it can be blown away just as easily. This is a card of going with the, the start of the journey earning things as you go and manifesting things as you go as well. I'm going to keep going here. The stepping into power, you'll feel powerful. You'll feel guided. Again, this feeling of higher self and then lower self, like there's this beautiful balance between light and dark. The moon in reverse for me is a card of like true intuition, true clarity, um, feeling connected to the feminine divine, the goddess of the moon energy. In the upright, the moon is confusion and sometimes like underlying motives. Um, it's, it's also a card for Pisces. But in this particular instance, this is like achieving this balanced state after having true access to both all aspects of yourself as above, so below. This is coming into union with higher self, with purpose. There's this past life relationship energy as well that is coming in. All right, we have a blocked partnership card. There's a blocked partnership card on that one. Why would there be a blocked part? Oh, um, oh, 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 I, like you, you really did have, oh, you've been, you have been having the long dark night of the soul where you couldn't find your higher self or you couldn't find your guidance. It wasn't blocked permanently. It wasn't blocked permanently. It was so that you could connect in this very meaningful way. Like you've had this, you know, fly by the seat of your pants energy in the background of your whole life. Like you've known you could trust your intuition, but it was not in this true connection to, I feel guided towards purpose. I feel guided towards meaning. Like if anything, that, that alien energy keeps coming through, if anything, you have this disconnect. You've had this weird disconnect from the idea that this is where you're meant to be. This, this, this journey has felt like, honest to goodness, I get the weirdest energy here. Like at different points, you have like entertained the idea, the notion that it's like, I, I wonder if there's any chance that I was like sentenced to this. <laughs> like, you know, is this a punishment for something I did in a different place, a different time? And like you're, you're, you've got a good attitude about it, but no, no, it wasn't. You had more connect, trouble connecting to your true divine self because it, it really does appear to be from somewhere just a little bit distant and therefore a little bit further out of reach. But when it is truly in connection and in conjunction and in union with you, you have the highest of the high self and then it is grounded in the most grounded energy. There is nothing wrong with dark energy. It is being ruled by it and being ruled by darker impulses that is the problem. What I tell people as they come into like their balanced state is we're not supposed to deny our darkness. We're supposed to understand it. We're supposed to put our monsters on a leash and make them work for us. Like if, if lust and greed is part of it, because this is a card for greed. If that is one of the things that is motivated, even in like, you know, I just like material things. I, that's the thing that makes me feel better. Like you've had to fight off like pursuing things just for gain. That would be bringing the shadow self into submission. And that's really what this is saying is like a feeling of isolation for safety will result in a feeling of connection. The hard work will earn your success. This delayed fulfillment where you thought, it's like, well, this is all just bunk. Because the Seven of Swords can be about being misled. 
but there's something far more positive about this one. Like I said, it's, it, it could go either way. Is he taking them or is he putting them back? Is he reassembling the pieces or is he trying to get away with something? And that's that battle between the higher self and the lower self as well. Kundalini rising, apparently the chaos and storms will lead you to hap happiness untold. That is truly having a spiritual awakening within. That is truly being, again, what's improving is your connection to your soul's purpose, to your feeling of higher self, to guidance, to like even being able to almost converse with spirit guides in a way that, like sometimes you're like, could somebody turn this up? Okay, stalker. That's a stalker's energy as well. Interesting. Divinely timed prosperity. We have a social media's energy with this six of wands. And this is like viewers as well. This is somebody watching. The only proviso that you're being provided here is with this blocked partnership and then stalker. It, it, it suggests that there's protection for you, but that you need to like really be aware that with success can come can come some elements and some influences that you have to be able to guard against. And it's not to retreat into self again, into this feeling of isolation. But with this particular energy, the devil, and then the seven of swords is one of the stalker cards, because this person's creeping around. Just be a little bit aware of that. Here's the thing, this divinely timed prosperity and that feeling of things coming into balance, receiving improvement, there's just this kind of feeling of a lightening of responsibility and an increase in a different kind of responsibility. Meaning that there is you will have to understand that the more work you do that is in service of others, the more there really is an adversarial force to that. This is being in perfect balance, but you're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to ask for more guidance on like the people who come into your life in a professional setting, because it's like you're becoming like this is a card of popularity. In most depictions, it's somebody up on a horse and this crowd's looking up at them in admiration. You will receive a great deal of admiration for your efforts. And you, the only caution that you're receiving here is that you, you will simply have to exercise some caution. Just exercise some caution. Um, do let people in, but let them in appropriately. This is mostly about like prosperity and divine connection. The unicorn, good fortune and friendship. And then I have the shield, you are safe from harm. What do I have after that? Earth, utilize logic, reason, and common sense. <laughs> One of the things that will keep you... People who come towards you, there is a stage, in, because we, we need to be able to extend trust appropriately. Um, there are good human beings out there. But as somebody experiences more and more success, they can have people with less and less glorious motives attempting to be part of their life. And the utilizing logic, reason, and common sense is be cautious, but not guarded. Cautious, but not guarded. Because the more that comes to you, it's like more people will want a little bit of a piece of it. And that's the only negative thing that I have here. Um, there's also like allow yourself to indulge yourself a little bit more than you do. Like, if you've done all of this work to become this very pure source of energy, remember, like, some self-indulgence keeps you grounded in the, in, in the actual... Earthly pursuits aren't bad. Like, you know, sitting down and eating a giant cheesecake or something, as long as it's not every darn day, and it really is an indulgence, self-indulgence has its place. Uh, Angel of Balance, I can't believe I was talking about that, just as I... We need to be in better balance. We need to have our darker impulses and our higher self in balance. And because your higher self is very, 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 very elevated, your lower self needs to be very, very, very deeply grounded. So self-indulgence is something, and take the form that it needs to for you. But really what's coming in to be for you, the thing that's improving, is that feeling of connection, that feeling of guidance, that feeling of purpose. 
and more and more success coming to you. But be a little bit tiny bit careful because the cleanse and a couple of other things here. What were you again? Moon dance. Listen to the rhythm and sway along the heap. Okay, the rhythm and sway. Balance, 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 balance. Um, don't be, don't go towards extremes. Just don't go towards extremes. And, <laughs> oh, I understand. This is a card of healing from addiction and codependency. And trauma survivors, it's not always addiction. It's a form of dependency upon routine. Doing things to excess because it's like there's no... It's, a, it's trying to seek relief from something. And so remember, it, it shouldn't be either or. It shouldn't be either or. If unless you truly have like you're like the, you're a teetotaler and like completely pure of all substances because it's like, no, I genuinely have an addiction. I can't do this. Remember, indulge your earthly self appropriately. That's the last part of balance. We have a woman holding a heart. There's an energy of a soulmate as well. Now remember, soulmates take different forms. The reason that I always, with group number four, like have a tendency to add that proviso is that for whatever, uh, I knew it, um, Karen Connection, for whatever reason, group number four has just seriously struggled with the idea that there's a place for connection again after a long and difficult journey. Isolation for safety is fear-based. Isolation because I love my life is absolutely fine. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm practically a recluse in my own regard. Um, as long as I'm super duper happy doing that, swell. But if I'm doing it because I'm afraid somebody's going to, like, drain me dry and I'm going to, I can't protect myself or the wrong people will always knock on my door or there aren't any good people then that has a different meaning behind it. Seeking safety and isolation denies you a full experience. Allow yourself to be part of the carnival. Allow yourself to be part of the carnival and it takes whatever form you want it to. Um, that angel of balance, um, I'm telling you, it, it really is like your balancing agents are coming in in all of their forms including and like i said i don't always look at the back of the deck what happens for me is sometimes i'll pick up a deck and the last card stays behind i never see it until i turn around to put the deck away and it is because the shadow influence is like you're supposed to be paying attention to me too so i always pick it up and include it in the reading on this particular one because it ended with the devil i checked the shadow influence a relationship your past is dictating your choices a little bit too much Unless you truly are convinced, I used to, like, this is something that I will lose control of. Test your own boundaries a little bit more than you do sometimes. That's all. Here we go. One and two and three. And, like, please, 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 please hear me. If you are in a true addiction recovery program, disregard that part. Balance can be about enjoying life. And there is just a difference. There just is a difference. But if you have given up all... And in search for a higher self, if you have been like, I don't even take in white sugar. Listen, if your favorite thing in the world was, like me, a dark peanut butter cup, you eat peanut butter cup every now and then. You don't have to live a life of deprivation to be connected. Isolation. There we go again. Oh, how on the nose are we going to get here? Dazed and confused. Listen to your intuition. Divine masculine. With the woman holding a heart and angel of balance. Don't seek safety in isolation. Take risks, allow people in appropriately. Days confused, you will be able to tap into your higher self and your intuition will inform you when you got the creepers. Divine masculine. The, 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 the counterbalance to your loving energy, the powerful energy, stepping into power, is trying to enter your life and I do believe it is in the form of a person. Is this a past life relationship or a person from the past? I do not know. It will differ from person to person. This is a general reading, but it's there. 
And this will only be appropriate for you as a message if part of you is like, nope, 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 safety in me. I have found the way to be happy, and it is to be happy just as me. You discovered that, you built that power, you have faith in it. Remember, inclusion of others is part of your purpose. The stalker energy, listen, it's possible that you've had problems with stalkers in the past. I know I have. Um, and can it make me a little bit leery when somebody like tries to connect with me? Yeah. Like, it was a, I did a reading and like really went into this, but somebody followed me from one store to another and it scared the heck out of me. Like when the person tried to approach me and I went home and I was furiously angry just furiously angry at the divine because it's like still it's been almost four years and I and like the idea of somebody connecting to me is terrifying to me and I realized that wasn't what it was it was that like I was angry that somebody had behaved inappropriately and that my fear was actually appropriate and that what it was telling me is that I can actually spot a red flag before I'm standing in the middle of a battlefield and that was progress for me Remember, even if you haven't had the best luck in the past, that does not define your future. And you never, this is group number four, it's like we're going to get it put on a t-shirt for you. You never have to have a relationship you don't want to. But make sure that you are choosing your solitude for reasons of I am as happy and as fulfilled as I can be, rather than I fear this energy. Live your life in balance again. Don't go to extremes. One extreme is not better than the other. Group number four, you always fascinate the heck out of me. You are complicated and largely very, very, very intelligent people. Like that's one of the things that always comes through is there's this, it's the energy of air, so it's that mental energy. And my gosh, can you wield a rationalization against yourself? Be careful with that energy, but know that more prosperity, more opportunity, more success, more beauty is coming towards you and apparently uh, an attempt to counterbalance the divine masculine with the divine feminine i don't know why i didn't even see it till then but that's what that is your counterbalancing agents are trying to come to you if let the appropriate people in appropriately and only you get to decide that because you decide the relationships that you want to have and you decide the relationships you don't want to have but maybe check in with your higher self to see Am I limiting myself again in what I will receive from a place of self-protection that doesn't trust in my ability to self-protect in the here and now? Okay, take care. Be well. That was your reading.